we correct each other and we think this is all what? Amr bil ma'roof. And we think in our, in our head, we think, this is how we think, we're helping them out. We're helping them out. First of all, your intention to help anybody else is what? For you, you yourself to be grateful to Allah. And secondly, whoever you're helping out, the reason that you want to do that for them, on top of you being grateful to Allah, is genuine love, genuine concern. Genuine love and concern. If you don't care about someone, you can't give them advice. <coughs> and when you give advice to someone you don't care about, they know you don't care. They know you don't care. They can tell. You know what happens to us when we give advice? We get really angry. That's no way to give advice. And so as I, as I wind towards the conclusion of this khutbah, I'm halfway through. I want to share with you one very peculiar example. Try and pay close attention to this example. Because it's one of the most, in my mind, one of the most powerful examples of what I'm trying to get across. Allah Azza wa Jal is unimaginably merciful. And the most merciful of His names is Ar-Rahman. You all know that. And yet, there are a group of people on this earth who say that Allah has taken a son, Allah, their celebrations are on the corner. Yes? So now, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions this in the Quran and He says in Surah Maryam, وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدَى They said, Ar-Rahman has taken a son. He didn't say there, Allah has taken a son. He said, Ar-Rahman has taken a son. And then after that, He expresses His anger. لَقَدْ جِئْتُمْ شَيْئًا إِدَّى It's understandable that an Aziz gets angry. The authority gets angry. We experience that in this world. Authorities get angry. It's understandable al qawi gets angry. The powerful gets angry. It's understandable. Someone who is duntiqam, the capable and possessing the power to take revenge, gets angry. It's understandable. Al-Jabbar gets angry. It's understandable. Ar-Rahman gets angry. It's beyond fathom. Ar-Rahman, when, when you hear the word Ar-Rahman, you don't expect anger. What do you expect? Mercy. Allah mentions His name, Ar-Rahman. And in the next ayah, He displays His anger. It's something to wonder about. And one of the results of that is, as merciful as Allah is, that one thing you people say, that one thing you say that Allah has taken a son, even gets rid of that mercy and Allah makes him so angry. And not only is Allah angry, listen to this. The fa'id, the subject of that verb is not Allah, it's the skies. Allah says the skies are about to tear open. Allah did not say He's about to tear them open. Allah said the skies on their own are about to tear open. Now I want you to think about this. Somewhere on the street, there's somebody who says Jesus is Lord. Who heard it? Just the guy next to him. I didn't even hear it, I'm not far enough to hear him. But those words are so offensive and so heavy, they travel across the skies. And the entire skies are so offended they're about to tear open because somebody says Allah has taken a son. They're almost takadu, almost about to tear open. But then shakwad up. And the earth is about to crack open just because they say Allah has taken a son. I want you to keep that in mind as I go on. That's not my example yet. But I want you to keep that in mind. These same Christians, a group of them from Najran, from a town called Najran, they came to visit Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What makes Allah angry, you would argue logically, what makes Allah angry should make Rasulullah angry sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But watch. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, yes, you've come to talk to me to see if I'm a prophet or not. You know what? Let me put you up in executive suite residence. You stay in al-Masjid al-Nabawi. These Christians that believe Allah has taken a son, and have, some have come even to debate the Messenger of Allah. They are not just going to say something offensive about to Allah. They're going to be arguing with the Messenger of Allah. And where did the Messenger say you get to stay? As honored guests inside the masjid of the Prophet himself, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Not only that, you pray the way you pray in the masjid. He told them, you pray the way you're going to pray inside the masjid. That is so peculiar. What do we learn from that? We learn as much as we hate that belief. As much as we despise that belief, we can't stand that belief because we know how offensive it is to Allah Himself. That hatred for that belief 
cannot translate into hatred for those people. It can't. And until they come with their own sound heart and sound judgment to Islam, we will not force them to change their ways, even if they're going to keep their ways up, inside the house of Allah. This is, if you're going to say you do Amr bin Ma'roof, you're not going to graduate over the practice of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In everything he does, he's doing Amr bin Ma'roof. In everything he does, he's teaching Amr bin Ma'roof. That's part of his job. So maybe we don't understand what it means clearly. Maybe we haven't understood the manners of Amr bin Ma'roof. On our beliefs, we never compromise. But our behavior, our behavior has to exemplify the behavior of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you really develop a connection with Allah, you will learn to love the truth, and you will also learn to be patient with people around you. So he says, what more bin ma'roof? Wanha anil munka. But he adds something you're gonna need. Without which you will not be able to do Amr bin ma'roof, and you will not be able to do Nahi anil munka. You will not be able to tell anybody anything good, whether it's inside your family or on a podium or in a church, anywhere. You won't be able to tell anyone to do anything good. You will not be giving good advice ever or stopping people for harmful activity ever. You won't be able to do it if you don't have this one ingredient. He says, وَصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا أصابك. Be patient over whatever happens to you. Whatever falls upon you, you need to learn to deal with it. <coughs> Take it with a thick skin. Don't get offended. If anybody has a right to get offended, it's Allah's Messenger wasallam. If anybody has a right to get offended, it's Nuh salam. These are people that put up with a lot of stuff. You and I can't compare. Oh, I know, bro, you're telling me to be patient, but I try to give my cousin advice. You know, he's so obnoxious. He's so disrespectful. My nephew, my niece, my cousin, my daughter, my sister, my brother. I don't even talk to them because they make me so angry. They say such retarded things. Well, you know what? Much more offensive things have been said to messengers before. And they learn to be patient year after year after year. Same exact people. Same exact people. Wasbir alama asabah. 